What's up everyone, welcome back. Patrick here, moving on to the next video. We're now gonna talk about the price elasticity of demand coefficient. So this is sort of a continuation of the previous video. In the previous video, we introduced the price elasticity of demand in general. And we talked about that it is how much that quantity demand changes with a change in price, or more generally, how sensitive consumers are to a change in price. And in this video, we're gonna show how to represent that price elasticity of demand a little bit more technically through algebra. And I'm gonna show you how to do it through a bunch of different examples. And so we're gonna be calculating something called the price elasticity of demand coefficient. And the formula for the coefficient in general, I'm gonna represent the coefficient with this capital E here. It's basically the percentage change in quantity demanded we're just gonna be looking at a single good or service, so the percentage change in quantity demanded over the percentage change in price. That's the formula for the coefficient. There's actually gonna be specific formulas for this numerator and this denominator as well, and I'm gonna show you how to work with them through examples in a little bit. But before getting into the actual algebra or any examples, I actually want to discuss the value of the coefficient, what values it could take. And depending on what values this coefficient takes, we're gonna respectively categorize that good or service depending on that value. So if the coefficient that you get here from this calculation is gonna be greater than one, then we say that that good or service is elastic. And remember, when a good or service is elastic, it means it's more sensitive to change in prices, which makes sense. If you look at this formula, if this coefficient is gonna be greater than one, it means the numerator is gonna be greater than the denominator. And so that means that the percentage change in quantity demanded is gonna be greater than the percentage change in price. And if you intuitively think about it, it means that consumers are gonna be more sensitive to change in prices because this, that quantity demanded is gonna change more, right? So we categorize that good or service as elastic if this coefficient is greater than one. Now, if it's equal to one, then we categorize the good or service as having unitary elasticity or that it's unit elastic. You may see different words being used in different textbooks for this. I'm just gonna say that that good or service is unitary, meaning that that percentage change in quantity, uh, quantity demand is gonna be equal to the percentage change in price, right? If the numerator and denominator are equal, then that coefficient is going to be equal to one. And then if it's less than one, then that good or service is going to be inelastic. And remember, the more inelastic a good or service is, is the less sensitive it is to change in prices, which makes sense because if this coefficient is going to be less than one, it means the numerator is going to be less than the denominator. So that percentage change in quantity demanded is going to be less than that change in price. So let's show how all this works through an example. So let's say if the price of a good decreases from $21 to $19, the quantity demanded increases from 100 to 150. And notice that with that first sentence, that scenario makes sense. Notice how it follows the law of demand. We know that if a price of a good or service decreases, quantity demanded is going to increase. But it could have also been vice versa. If that price of a good increased, then the quantity demanded would have decreased. So either of those scenarios can be happening. In this case, we're dealing with a decrease in the price. So with that scenario, what is the price elasticity of demand coefficient? And I rewrote the formula over here. Now to calculate this formula, I'm gonna do it in steps. And I'm actually going to deal with the numerator first. So that percentage change in quantity demanded. So there's actual there's an actual way to calculate just this part, the numerator. It's gonna have its own formula. And the formula for the percentage change in quantity demanded is going to be the change in quantity demanded 
However, you always want to make sure that this number is going to be positive. So we're going to put an absolute value there. If you remember from math, what an absolute value does is it takes any negative number, turns it to a positive, or if the number is positive, it just keeps it at that positive. And the reason why you want to make sure you keep this positive is because on a demand curve, if you go from this point to this point, the elasticity should be the same as if you go from this point to this point. But if you didn't put this absolute value, what would happen is let's say when you go from this point to this point, you might get an elasticity of demand coefficient of like, let's say negative two, and then maybe over here you would get positive two, and then you can't really compare them. So what we do is we keep everything as a positive value so we can compare different uh, goods and services and we can compare that same good or service on different points on the demand curve. So you always want to make sure that this here is positive. Notice in this case it is going to be positive. It's going from 100 to 150 so it's going up by 50 but if it was the other way around if it was going from 150 to 100 then that would be negative 50, but you would want to change that to a positive number. So this is going to be an absolute value of the change in quantity demanded. And notice it's the change in quantity demanded, not the percentage change. So that's another distinction there. This here is going to deal with percentages, which we're going to put in this numerator. But this here deals with the actual, abs uh, the actual value of that change in quantity demand. It deals with the actual numbers, not percentages. So this is going to be 50 in this case. Okay, so we get the absolute value of the change in quantity demanded, and that's going to be all over the average quantity demanded. And this average quantity demanded is basically going to be the two values, the two ends that you're looking at, the average of the two. So the way we would calculate that is we would just add the 100 and 150 and divide it by two. And then we would get 125, which would be the midpoint. The way you find the midpoint of two ends of an interval, you add the two ends, divide it by two. So knowing this here, Basically, what we'll have is uh, we'll have 150 minus 100 all over the average quantity demanded. We're going to take the 100 and we're going to add the 150 and we're going to divide it by 2. So if you want to take this and sort of make a separate formula for it too, the average quantity demanded and this uh, change in quantity demanded, you can. I'm just going to put them all in that same fraction. So over here what we would get is uh, 50 over 125 like that. And we would end up getting when you do this 50 divided by 125 gives us 0 0.4. And so that percentage change in quantity demanded is 0 0.4 and that value we're going to put in this numerator. Now, I actually want to quickly discuss why we take the average here, because what would happen, it's kind of similar to what I said before, if we didn't take the average, we would actually get a different value here than if we go from this point to this point versus if we go from this point to this point. Okay, so let's say that at this point we had a quantity demanded of 100, and then this one had a quantity demanded of 150. Well, if we calculated the percentage change, if we went from here to here and we calculated the percentage change on that initial value, which is usually how percentage changes are calculated, just not in this case, but if we did follow that same routine, basically the percentage change would be 50 over that initial value of 100. The change is 50 and the initial value is 100, so we would get a 50% change. But now, what if we went from 150 to 100? Then notice that the change would still be 50, but now that initial value would be 150. And so we would get 0 0.33 over here. And so what it's going to do is it's going to change this value, this percentage 
change in quantity demand. It's also going to change this value, the percentage change in price, and it's going to give us a different coefficient. But going from this point to this point, or from this point to this point, that coefficient should be the same. And so to make sure that it's the same, we use that average number here in the middle of both of these. Because then if we go from here to here, from here to here, it's going to be the exact same thing. We're going to get 0.4 for that numerator, and we're going to get that same percentage change in price once we calculate it as well. Right? So that's why we use that, uh, that average always, that midpoint between the two points. Right, so that's how you calculate the percentage change in quantity demanded. That's the formula, that's the process. Next up, what we would calculate is the percentage change in price. So that's going to be the second step. And the formula for this, very similar to the percentage change in quantity demanded. What we would do is we would take the absolute value of the change in price. This would be the actual numbers of the change in price, not the percentage. So we're going to take the absolute value of the change in price over the uh, average price between the two points that we are looking at. And so in this case, notice that it's going from 21 to 19, so the price is going down. So what we're going to have here is the absolute value of negative 2, but we know that that's going to turn into a positive 2. And then the average price, we would add 21, 19, divided by 2. So 21 plus 19 is 40, divided by 2 is 20, the midpoint between 21 and 19. So we would end up with 2 over 20, right? This absolute value negative 2 changes to a positive 2, and then we end up with 20 here. So 2 divided by 20 gives us 0 0.1, right? So over here, this would be 0 0.1, that percentage change in price. And then we can calculate this, 0 0.4 divided by 0 0.1, that would give us 4. And so that ends up being the price elasticity of demand coefficient for this specific good that we are looking at. And so basically, this good, what does it cl get classified as? Well, because that coefficient is greater than 1, we classify the good as elastic. Now, I mentioned in the overview video that the elasticity of a good can change throughout the demand curve. So the good is classified as elastic on these points on the demand curve. So basically these points, what's happening, if we actually draw this demand curve, so we got price, we got uh, quantity demanded. So what's happening is that at a price of 21, the quantity demanded is 100. So 21, and then we got 100 here. This is not necessarily going to be to scale. I'm just kind of showing you what's happening. And then if the price goes down to 19, that quantity demand is going to increase to 150 which is going to be like over here. Okay, so that curve is looking something like that. So this good is classified as elastic between these two points here. But the elasticity can change between another two points throughout the curve. Okay, so just because it's classified as elastic for this point doesn't mean it's always going to be, it's not always going to have this coefficient. Right? The coefficient can change and will change throughout a uh, demand curve, especially if it's a curve. If it's a line, if it's a straight line, if you're representing it through a straight line, which some textbooks do, then it's going to be the same, but uh, it can change throughout the curve. But anyway, for this question, the price elasticity of demand coefficient is 4, and so we classify that good as being elastic.